Hey, it's Brian from AceTennisOnline.com. In this video, I'm going to give you my top three reasons for why I think Medvedev beat Djokovic in the U.S. Open final just a few weeks ago. Now, let me play uh, one rally that I think sums up a few things quite well. All right, so tip number one here, or I guess reason number one, more like, I'm so used to saying tip number one in my coaching videos. All right, reason number one is he wasn't afraid to run time. I mean, so he was, he was consistent and he wasn't feeling pressured. So he just said, I'm going to rally as many as I have to. And he was still trying to be offensive when he wanted to and when he saw an opportunity. But unlike Djokovic, he wasn't afraid to rally. And I feel like the entire time it seemed like that Djokovic – because maybe he knew that he, he played six more hours uh, throughout the U.S. Open, so he knew he didn't have as much in the tank as Medvedev. So it just seemed like he was trying to force uh, himself to be more aggressive, and he was trying to go for too much sometimes at the wrong time. Medvedev, on the other hand, I feel like he, didn't, he wasn't pressured. He didn't look like he was pressured. He looked very, very calm. He looked like he wasn't afraid to rally 10, 20, 30 shots. But when he saw an opportunity to be offensive, he took it. So very smart play on Medvedev's behalf. Now, reason number two is, and you can't deny how well he was serving. Besides a little hiccup towards the end of it, uh, Medvedev was serving super well. I mean, his first serve percentage was good. Um, he was hitting a lot of, he was hitting aces. He was hitting a lot of uh, serves that weren't coming back. And again, you're talking about uh, against Djokovic, probably one of the best returners who is Mr. Flexible himself and who usually gets his racket on so many serves. I mean, one of the reasons why he did so well at Wimbledon was because the average amount of first serves that came back in the tournament were 72%. He was at 80%. So he got 80% of first serves back. Again, on a fast surface like that. So that's incredible. He is such a good returner. But Medvedev did an excellent job serving that day. He was hitting that ball out wide. And he took advantage of his height and that big serve. Reason number three. And this is a little bit of a mixed one between offense and defense. Um, but I met Bedev's defensive skills, I mean, throughout the entire tournament, but also especially against Djokovic, were just incredible. And that's sometimes a very tough player to play against because you think you should have won the point with that shot. All of a sudden, this guy consistently makes you hit two to three more shots. And um, let's play, let's actually play the next rally on this one. So I'm going to give you one more rally here that I think, you know, does a really good job of showing like, Medvedev's defensive skills. So let me play it for you and then I'll break it down. So again, Medvedev, you know, again, waiting one or two shots. Look at that defense. So, He's patient, waiting to be offensive, but again, he's just making, I mean, that defensive shot was just, it was a really good example, but he consistently defended well, and against Novak, who was consistently trying to rush it and trying to, to pull the trigger and go for shots too early, it's just, it's really frustrating because, I mean, for a player like, you know, if you're Djokovic in this case, and you're consistently trying to be aggressive and finish the point, and you have to hit one, two, three more shots every rally, it becomes exhausting, and it, calls, it, it costs a lot of energy, the energy that Djokovic simply didn't have on finals day. The one thing that I think Djokovic could have done better is use more drop shots. I was really looking for him to, to actually use more drop shots um, simply because like, Medvedev spends a lot of time often back here behind the baseline. So I think actually using depth a little bit more would have been a very effective shot. So I would have liked, uh, liked to see kind of Djokovic try to hit that Either hit that deep, deep shot to Medvedev's backhand, and then go for that backhand drop shot down the line, or maybe even hit a um, hit a shorter ball, like a shorter angle here, getting Medvedev off the court. So let's say getting him off the court, and then going for that drop shot on the next one. So I think Djokovic could have used the depth a little bit more to his advantage, just because Medvedev spends a lot of time far behind the baseline. So again, my top three reasons are. Um, 
the fact that Medvedev just seemed like he was more comfortable prolonging the point, and Djokovic was trying to force that rally to end too early, and he ca- it caused him to make a lot more mistakes than he probably normally would. Uh, reason number two, Medvedev was serving well and didn't really give Djokovic, one of the best returners, uh, a lot of chances to really get in the game. So it seems like from the very get-go, I don't think there was one point in the match where Djokovic was actually leading in, in the in the scoreline. So the pressure was consistently on him. Medvedev was serving well throughout the entire match. And uh, for me, reason number three was just the fact that he was, again, so well. I mean, he did such a great job defending and, and just making Djokovic work harder and harder uh, to end the point when he just didn't have that energy to consistently do that over several hours. So well-deserved and a uh, great job from uh, Daniel Medvedev. Congratulations to him. I mean, he definitely deserved winning the U.S. Open title. So I look forward to seeing um, more more from him in the future, <laughs> even though his style is a little bit funky. Now, make sure to hit like and subscribe um, just to level up your game even further. And thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.